Welcome back to Friday Night Football and PlayOnSports.com. Coming to you live from Fresno, California, I'm Mark Espinoza with Paris Gaines on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Tonight's matchup features the 0-0 Buchanan Bears visiting the 1-0 Bullard Knights. Paris, we have a good game tonight, uh, matchup uh, featuring one team, the uh, Bullard Knights coming off that win over Paso Robles last week, and then Very we've got impressive. Buchanan once again uh, uh, going into the first game of the season. What do you see as the uh, the play of the game in the, in the beginning of the first quarter? Well, I look to see Bullard to try to come out there and establish the run early. Uh, they want to they prove their dominance early. Uh, they want to let the Bears know that they are the team to beat in the Valley. Uh, the Bears coming off a, a dismal 3-8 and eight season, they want to start fast. They want to they want to they want to execute on offense and they want to develop a tempo early, early. I think it's key for them to start fast also and a turnover. And turnover is a key to this game, uh, to win a turnover battle and play with great emotion. We just saw the uh, Bullard Knights running onto the field here at the start of the uh, first quarter here, about to start in any minute now. And then we have the uh, Buchanan Bears now coming onto the field. Buchanan Bears, uh, they are 0-0 on the season, first game of the season. They have the red, white, and blue jerseys with the red stripes down the sides of their pants. And the Bullard Knights uh, are in navy blue. The referees for the uh, game tonight, we have referee Chris Hickman, umpire Dennis Hall, linesman Sergio Ramos, line judge Austin Davis, and the back judge is Kevin Blevins. And they still have to do the coin toss, so uh, it depends on who gets the ball first, of course, who can draw first blood in this, uh, this non-league matchup. Should be a good rivalry between uh, a school from Fresno and a school from Clovis. All right. City lines have been drawn. We have a nice night here. It's, uh, it's a blue moon. It's a uh, blue moon Friday night here on PlayOnSports.com. And uh, both teams are looks like they're ready to go. Mark, I look to see uh, it's going to be a shootout tonight. I think in the end, one team is just going to simply wear down the other team tonight. Uh, look for Buchanan to come out and throw that football right away in that spread offense. Now, do you see uh, Bullard on offense as some kind of an offense that will try to run the ball uh, up the middle, uh, power, power power football, if you will, trying to uh, eat up the clock and, and control the ground game and, and eat, up, eat up the game clock? Do you see that kind of game? Almost certainly. You know, they're just gonna they're gonna take what you give them. Um, they they have skill they're skilled all the way across the board and they're able to throw the ball. Uh, they want to come out and establish the run, but I also see them coming out multiple formations, throwing the ball early, the, the quick game. But uh, if they can pound the ball with the, the Jonte O'Neal, the talented junior running back. Um, I think they're going to ride that horse all night long. Okay, it looks like uh, Buchanan has won the coin toss. They'll be receiving here. They are the team on the near side, and the far side is the Bullard Knights. Ball is placed at the 40-yard line for the kickoff. And going back deep for uh, Buchanan is is uh, number eight, Billy East, and uh, number 48, we've got, make that Logan Stowell, number 49 going deep for Buchanan. And they're ready for the kickoff. Looks like everybody's on their feet in the stadium too. They're all ready to go this Friday night on playonsports.com. Hope you enjoy the game. And it's a deep kick. You've got the uh, number eight taking the ball up to about the 15. He's got some space on the near side up to the 20, and he, before he's pushed out about the 22-yard line. Excellent First run down. by the returner with absolutely zero blocking. That was Billy East on the return. So it'll be first and 10 for the uh, Buchanan Bears. Look for the Bears uh, to attack. Oh, here they go. No huddle spread. Here it is. The Knights right. are. Okay, here we go. They got a spread offense there, four wide receivers. And it's a little play action. He takes it on the option to the near side, and he goes out to about the 33-yard line to make it the 34 for Buchanan. Yes, excellent read by the quarterback. The, quarterback. Uh, the Knights came out really unprepared uh, for this no huddle tonight.
So the ball is placed at about the 32-yard uh, line. Second down and two to go for Buchanan. Nice, nice play on the last play from scrimmage. And a deep pass to the oh, inside, and wow. it's incomplete. Looks like there was a lot of traffic in the Most middle certainly. of the field. The linebacker just simply dropped into his zone, and uh, that was almost a pick six to the house for the Buller Knights. So uh, an incomplete pass. Make it third and two for Buchanan. At the 32. Would not have been a, a good start for the, uh, the Buchanan Bears. Tyler Fry is your quarterback. He gives to the running back inside, and he gets to about the 40, 35-yard line, I should say. Yeah, excellent game by the young back. Young man, uh, shoulders, shoulders, shoulders bent, knees moving, just picking up the tough yards inside, just getting what you can get and getting down. Ball's placed on about the 35-yard line. First and 10 for Buchanan. Got four wide receivers. One back in the uh, backfield. Oops, almost fumbled the ball there, the snap. And he looks downfield, and it's hmm. incomplete. A little miscue. Looked as if the receiver, receiver might have slipped, breaking on his route. Uh, the ball slightly, slightly, a little too much on it. But the defense right there, right there to make a play. Okay, so it's going to be second down and 10 at the 35 of Buchanan as they line up. Three defensive linemen on the uh, line for uh, Bullard. Oh, it looks like a little movement on, looks like a legal procedure call on that side of the field. No, near certainly. side. There'll be a penalty on Buchanan. So they'll mark off the yardage here. A little early nerves in the game here. Yeah, oh yeah, first game of the season. They want to do much better than they did last year. They were 3-8 uh, and eight last year, so. It's time to pick it up. Second down and 15 for Buchanan at the 30. Another pass inside to number 47. And he gets down to about the uh, 37, looks like the 37-yard uh, line. Excellent quick read by the quarterback and the tight end right there. Uh, the young man, nice and easy pop route, caught it. Picked up some tough yards. Third down. Another full uh, receiver set here. Stacked on the near side. And another drop back. He's Now he's trying to find a receiver. He throws way downfield. Receiver's uh, open. And he gets it down to about the 25-yard line. Great, great catch. Excellent read by the quarterback. Young man just put it where only his receiver can catch the ball. Looked like that was uh, Adam Sosman, yes. wide receiver. <laughs> yes, fantastic grab by number four, Adam Sosman. Ran a good route, looks like. Yes, fantastic right? on a deep post route. Excellent route, young man. Wow. Buchanan's running the, uh, running the ball, throwing, mostly throwing, though. Yeah, hitting on all cylinders right now early in the ballgame. Again, they got uh, wide receivers. Looks like it's going to be another a pass. Oh, now they go inside. And there's space on the left side, near side, and he gets to about the uh, – 13-yard line. Yes, early on in the game, Buchanan running the ball, passing the ball, hitting on all cylinders. Looks like a no-huddle offense here as he gets the uh, play from the sideline. So there looks like a hurry-up offense here, trying to get uh, the Buller defense off guard here, back on their heels. Looks like they're doing a good job with that, too. Second down and one at the 13. And it looks like a little confusion from the sideline. So Mike Voigt. Trying to get that play in. Tyler Fry at the quarterback slot. He ready for the snap. And it looks like a fake. Now he's going to the left side, near side. He throws to the left side to his wide receiver. And that's going to be number 47, Ben Sorensen. Okay, so we've got uh, the ball at the, looks like the uh, two-yard line for Buchanan. All right, 
give to the running back number 28, and he gets oh, man, to stuffed a, oh, inside. No, they had it. They had it stuffed up right at the middle. Stuffed inside. Looks like that was a running back. Gaps. Yes. Running back looking for some Steven room there Grady. inside. Stephen Grady got. He didn't have much of a chance there. No, he did not. The linebacker shot the gaps there. Both a gaps. All right, so here we go with no huddle offense, a uh, bear offense looking good out here, except for that last play. And it looks like uh, there's some movement on the line there. On the hard count. Got him on the hard count. Yeah. So they definitely have uh, Bullard uh, a little surprised here. They're kind of like starting a little slow on defense. Offsides on Bullard. So that's going to move the ball further up. Early on in the game is that Bullard defense is trying to figure out how to stop this, this spread multiple formation attack here by the Bears. So you think they're going to run it here, Paris, or do you think they're going to throw the ball? Oh, it's got to be a give here. Here we go. He's going to go inside. Oh, and oh. they've got They stuffed it. That Bowler defense just was ready for it. Trying to quickly get another play in here. Look for the tight end right here on that, that out route, that quick out right now. Okay. That quick read. They might have lost some yardage on that play. So now we're at the uh, five. It looks like the five-yard line as Coach Mike Voigt calls in the play. No huddles on the offensive side of the ball. Run pass option here, folks. Run pass option. Okay, Get the quarterback in space. Throws it in the middle. Oh, almost picked off. And it's and touch touchdown. Touchdown. Touchdown to Buchanan. Wow. And that was a deflected pass. Yes, looks like yes. It. Off the tip. Wow. To the wide receiver. Looks like number 21, uh, that was Cedric Castro, one of the key players for uh, Buchanan offense. Excellent focus by the young man. So it's 6 to nothing for the visitors, Buchanan. They go for the extra point here. Off Ball's the placed tip. about the 10. And here's the kick. And it's good. 7 to nothing, Buchanan. The first possession of the year, and they get a touchdown on Bullard, the fourth-ranked right. team in the section. Yes, what do you say, Mark? The Bullard Knights need to wake up early. I don't know, man. I hope, they, I hope they're not thinking about last week well, where they uh, got down against Casa Robles, but they came storming back. Well, we talked about it early. One of the keys to the game was for the Buchanan Bears to start fast, and that's exactly what they came out here to do, Mark. That's right. Marched all the way down the field, put one in early. Now, I don't think uh, – I think uh, – Bullard's coach, uh, Don Arax, he's probably going to tell his team, look, uh, it's only the first possession. Don't, don't, don't press. Just do your, do your, do your best game uh, planning here. Or, or, I'm sorry, just stay with the game plan, I should say, and uh, do what got you here and most, got the win last week. Most certainly. I'm almost positive Coach Arax and the rest of the staff is over there. They're just telling them to calm down. And it's going to be a heavyweight fight tonight. There's going to be some punches. Um, you may even get knocked down early. But uh, you have to pick yourself back up and just to stay calm, okay? We have a lot of football left to be played here. You can look very hungry, though, on that last possession, well, that first possession. So here we go with the kickoff. That was about a probably about a 80-yard drive, it seemed like it yes, was. Yes, it was. Okay, balls placed up to 40. Here we go, the Buchanan fake. Well, they're feeling good early. And back deep for Bullard. Looks like it's uh, number two, Darian Duckett. Ball's kicked. And he's got it about the... Uh, Six-yard line. He goes to. Uh, oh, he's now he's oh, yeah, just man. tackled right he's away. Up, he's still up. Oh man, oh, it was a fumble. Yards. Fumble. Oh man, he loses yards on that one. All the way down to about the five-yard line. Wow. They are really fired up now, Buchanan. Putting that night offense in a hole here. There we go. They mean business tonight. They're playing with great emotion. Let's take a look at that night offense. Okay, so the ball is placed at the five, first down and ten for Bullard, their first possession of the game on Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com here at McLean Stadium in Fresno, California. 
quarterback, Nico Pacheco. Mm, power. And he goes inside, but Buchanan's right there at, at the center of attack. Most certainly. Stops him. Slamming that middle. Maybe no gain on it. Looks like maybe maybe got no gain, looks like. We also talked early in the game. Key is to win uh, the line of scrimmage. Going to see early here. Maybe gain him about a yard on that play for about the six. So they're going to uh, run it again, do you think, Paris? I mean, yes, yes, a lot of shifting here. Maybe some play action here. They are back to snap. And give it inside again. Yeah. There's some hole right there, and he gets all the way to well, about he the is 10. The, the young back, the junior back, is very fantastic acceleration in a hole. Okay, so we've got uh, third down and five for Bullard at their, uh, looks like their 11-yard line. And they're a little different from the Cannon side. Uh, they've got their huddles, so they, they come up to the line. We've got an offset back here in the gun. And again, Nico and Pacheco falls on the edge. Oh, and and he goes in the end zone. Buchanan falls on that's the ball. A touch, that's a touchdown. It's a safety. Touchdown. Touchdown. Okay, touchdown. Touchdown. I thought it was going to be a safety. <laughs> Unbelievable. So touchdown for Buchanan. Wow. Wow. And they take a 13 to nothing lead over the uh, bonded bowler team here. Wow. Like we said early, folks, the moon is blue and everything is working for the Buchanan Bears right now. Wow. Wow. What a shock. Now, I think yeah, that was the first, uh, they, that was the early score in the uh, Bullard uh, Casa Robles game yes, last week. 14 though. From the beginning, so let's see how Bullard can come back for this. They're going for the uh, extra point here in Cannon. Maybe we've got a shocker in the making here. Oh. Ball is placed at the 10. And the ball is snapped. And the kick oh, wow. is no nice. good. No good. Uh oh. 13 to nothing is the no score. Good. Remember that one point, folks. Remember that. Donnie okay. Arex and his staff cannot be happy. Okay, well, you got to say, though, the uh, Buchanan Bears have the uh, big momentum right now. Well, that was a bad snap. That was a bad snap. Well, while we have a break here, do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups, like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for PlayOnSports.com broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and activities on the web. For more information, go to PlayOnSports.com. Okay, we've got six minutes and two seconds left in the first quarter with a uh, uh, shocking score with Buchanan. The Bears leading the Bullard Knights, fourth-ranked Bears, or Knights, I should say, 13 to nothing in the early going here on Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com. Nice crowd here at McLean Stadium. Good weather. Another warm day in the valley. And a blue moon to boot it all. Most certainly. And Coach Volt has to be smiling right now on that sideline. But, but the, the question is, can they keep this up for four quarters, Mark? They have to uh, keep the medal to the pedal. Or medal to the pedal, I should say. Okay, here we go with the kickoff. Once again. And he drives it. Uh, the pooch, to, the pooch. The pooch to about the 19-yard uh, line. And number 22's got the ball, and he's on the far side. He's only got one man to beat. He's going down the field all the way. He may go all the way. No, he gets to about the 35-yard uh, line of Buchanan. That oh, was yeah. a good run back. Yeah, fantastic run back. I understand you, you want to keep the ball away from the return men who, who are probably the other team's best skill position player. Okay, but... You want to throw the pooch out of the playbook. I've never been a fan of that because you get the entire kickoff team trying to get the guy. He breaks back, and there's no one over there, just like you saw. So we have excellent field position for uh, the Bullard Knights at the Buchanan, looks like the 38-yard line. First and 10, and they're trailing 13 to nothing. All right, there's a Oh, we have a flag timeout. here. There we go. What happened here? Oh, offsides against Buchanan. Somebody was lined up, uh, maybe. Uh, That's neutral zone. Okay. 
You don't want to give the Knights more room here after the fantastic return. Oh, okay, so it was a just a replacing of the ball. Man in motion, here we go. Give to the running back inside, and he gets to the, about the uh, 20, or make that the 25-yard uh, line. O'Neal on the carry, the young man, uh, very explosive from the gun there. Just the hole opened up like the Red Sea. The young man hit it well, picked up some more tough yards, man, as the Knights get closer and closer to that end zone. First down and 10, ball on the 25-yard line. So that was a good run back. That definitely gave them the field position. Oh, Maybe yeah. they can score here and uh, make it a much more competitive game. Oh, yeah, and some confidence, Mark. Yes. Some much-needed confidence. And we give it to the inside running back. He gets all the way down to about the 18-yard uh, line. Once again, uh, DeJounte O'Neal on the carry, the junior running back, DB, 5'7", about 170 pounds on the carry. Brought down by the Bears linebacker there. So second down and four, looks like. Ball on the 18-yard line. Oh, there's another flag. Maybe there was some movement on the offensive line. And the referees are talking about it. Looks like it's going to be... Offsides again on Buchanan. Well, they're getting a little antsy up there, it looks like. Yeah, you don't want to give away yards like that, Mark. They're, maybe they're just so uh, hyped up that the adrenaline is flowing well, and uh, the little, you know, too amped up. Yes, just a little too. You know, they need to calm down, settle down. These, these are gifts now. Yes, you're giving away yards here, giving away precious yards. It's now first down at the 13. And they give to the so, running back, and he tries to go inside, but he's uh, held to about maybe uh, three yards on the carry. Be second down and seven. So Junior back O'Neal again on the carry. Yeah, he's one of the key running backs for the uh, Bullard offense, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He looked as if he'd be tackled in the backfield right there. Made the first defender miss. That's a sign of a great back and always falling forward. So the ball is now in place at about the 11-yard uh, line for Bullard. And skip oh, to, to the fullback. fullback. He goes inside and doesn't get much there, maybe about a yard or two. Oh, and well defense on that one. Oh, most certainly. The, the, the give to the fullback is to keep that defense honest. You know, last two carries, DeJounte O'Neal, left, right, power zone. The give to the fullback is just to pick up some tough yards and to keep that, uh, that bare defense honest. Now, wouldn't you say as you get closer to the, uh, to the end zone, it would be tougher for the offense uh, because it's a smaller field to throw a pass, or you think they'd continue to do the – the power running game inside, or do you think they'll open it up? And oh, yeah. They're, no, they're, they're going to stick with what's working right now. Right. They're, they're rolling. they got the offset fullback right now. Look for some, some sprint out maybe or uh, outside, inside zone. Okay, so we give again to the running back, and he's stuffed behind the line. He may have lost on that play a couple yards. Excellent penetration by the Buchanan defense right there. Linebackers, Go ahead. linebackers are tight to the line of scrimmage, and they're, they're looking to stop that run. Maybe they ought to do some more play action or maybe get the tight end involved. Yeah. So it's fourth down and seven. Timeout on the field. With 2.49 left in the first quarter, Buchanan leads Bullard 13 to nothing. Yeah, we talked we talked early in the, in the game. Our coach Arax and that staff believe they can come out here and just out physical you up front. Right. And they're sticking to that game plan. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, they're not fooling around. Well, I think if they continue that, uh, maybe they'll be able to wear down the Buchanan defense, uh, grind it out. Mm -hmm. By the end of the third quarter, perhaps it'll start making a big difference in the game, which right. we, we shall see later. But uh, but so far, uh, Buchanan is uh, is leading the game. They've, uh, they've got those two quick touchdowns, uh, the first possession, then on the turnover. So now uh, we've got uh, Bullard going up to the line. Looks like they're going to 
They're going to go for it here. Here we go, knocking at the door. Wow. Fourth and seven. All right, fourth down and seven at the uh, ten. And he's going to throw it. And he's got somebody inside, and oh, it's a wow. touchdown. Bullard. Wow. Mark, talk about belief in your technique and believing in your, your players, your kids. A gutsy call by Coach Arax on fourth and seven, and it pays off, Mark. Looks like that was the number four, Tyler Molesky, the wide receiver. Good route. Fantastic so now, route. Now they, <laughs> sorry, Paris. Uh, now they're going to go for the extra point here. This could be key. Remember, uh, Buchanan missed that last extra point. Oh, it's, it's blocked. blocked. It's blocked. Wow. Wow. Well, you know. There you they, go. They missed their extra point. Buller did. Now, you know, Buchanan, they're still ahead by uh, a good uh, seven points. Excellent block by number six for the Buchanan Bears coming off the end right there. Robert Scanlon. Yes, Robert Scanlon. Fantastic. Coming off the edge, getting the block, preventing that extra point. Coach Pickett for the Buller Knights, the special teams coach, cannot be happy with that. That end cannot give the, the wing a free release like that. Well, we've had a lot of scoring so far, it seems like, early on in the first quarter here. First quarter's uh, only got 243 left, but uh, we've had almost 20 points scored, so it should be a barn burner for the rest of the way, it seems. <laughs> That's what it's looking like, Mark. <laughs> Can they keep up the pace? Wow. Well, it's a blue moon. You never know. It's, it could be <laughs> one of those crazy games, you know. <laughs> Unbelievable. So the ball once again is placed at the 40. Got two men deep for Buchanan. And the kick. And it goes to the far side, and he almost didn't look like he touched the ball. I'm not sure, but he, the other back got it, and he gets to about the 30-yard uh, line. So it'll be first and 10 for Buchanan. Here comes that Bears offense. Once again, look for the no huddle. As they're already getting the play from the sideline, they want to get going. They want to start fast, develop a tempo, get into a rhythm. Is that the kind of offense you think that uh, the coach is putting in this year for Buchanan? Uh, quick certainly. pace, uh, no yes. huddle? Yes, yes. They're ready to go. Plays in from the sideline. All right. Shotgun formation. It's another pass to the far or near side, 47. He gets to about the 27-yard uh, line. We talked earlier in the show that the, the, the Bears will attack from multiple formations, but they want to dink and dunk down the field. It was a fantastic on the deep post early on in the game. If it comes open, they just want to, they're going to rock you to sleep, rock you to sleep, and take a shot. Okay, here we go. We got the ball at the 27-yard line. Tyler Fry at quarterback position here, taking the snap. Shot Shot's done. He goes back. Screen. For a receiver. It's a screen to the near side, number eight. He goes to about the 36-yard line. He's tackled there. That's an excellent play call by Coach Volt. An over-aggressive defense. Timing route, 1-1,000, one, 1,000, one, release your linemen. Number Looks eight. like uh, both offensive lines are having their way with the defensive line. Oh, yeah, most certainly, most certainly, early on. First down and 10 at the 37. Shotgun formation. And he's looking to pass once again to the inside. Looks like the tight end, he loose. fumbles the ball. Oh, incomplete, oh, incomplete, incomplete pass. Incomplete. Okay, incomplete. he never had the ball to begin with. Wow. Timing is a little off there. Yes, it was there. Excellent, excellent screen call again. Okay. Coach Volt mixing it up here on offense. Throwing everything in the kitchen sink at the defense. All right, here we go. Second down and 10 at the 37 on the incomplete. And give to the inside to the running back. He comes to the near side, and he's tackled at about the... Uh, 37-yard line. That was a good read, good read. Yeah. 
Well, that's what 19 years of experience does for you at the coaching position for Buchanan. Mike Voigt, longtime coach, also the athletic director for the school this year. He's got his hands full. Yes, I believe that coach staff's been together for some time now, so they're very experienced over there, very experienced. There's a snap and looking downfield. He throws it to the near side, and it's caught. On the out route. By number three, Brett Carricker, the wide receiver, 5'11", senior, 155. Excellent out route. Young man snapped his head around, and uh, the ball was there. For being their first game of the season, they look really seasoned. No, they look sharp. Yeah. They look very sharp. Okay, here's the punt. Fourth down. One man deep for Bullard and the kick. And he lets it go out of bounds at about the, it looks like around the 26 yard line. So this time they did score, Buchanan. <laughs> so, so it looks like whoever has the ball is going to score every time. Right, right, right. Hey, at this point, it's got to be a win for the defense over there. It's a point uh, of minute, Knights. man. <laughs> yes. That's got to be a win. All right, so Bullard gets the ball back. Ball actually is placed at the 33-yard line. Look to see a heavy dose of uh, Mr. O'Neill here on this series. It's like a timeout Bullard. And there's a timeout on the field. 5.19 left to go. Scores 13 to 6 in favor of Buchanan. Play on Sports is now on Facebook and Twitter, giving you the news, information, and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live on demand games on YouTube at youtube.com backslash Play on Sports Network. Keep up with all the high school sports action every week from your destination on high school sports, playonsports.com. Well, it's been a spirited first half so far. We have both teams, uh, uh, both offenses are looking good. Crisp, uh, uh, Bullard has the power running game. You've got the no huddle offense for Buchanan. So what's going to happen next, do you think, Well, <laughs> it looks to be some breakdowns here on the defense, so I'm going to look for both defenses to start playing a little bit tougher here and start grinding it out. Here's the handoff. Outside. It's the inside and off tackle, woo. and in, he is slammed hard to the ground. <laughs> wow. There's some hard hitting going out there tonight, folks. Maybe he got about a yard or two on that one. If that, one yard maybe on the play. They mark it as second down and 10, though. Two wide receivers. You got a one back in the backfield. And then. Pass to the near side, but it's overthrown. Looks like he threw behind the receiver, the intended receiver. On the hitch Ryder. route. Oh, yeah. On the hitch route, trying to pick on uh, the junior number 27, uh, Kalon Milton, down here in the corner. Third down and 10. So both offenses uh, slowing down a little bit here. Maybe uh, nerves are beginning to subside a little bit. The adrenaline's kind of like maintaining itself now. Well, most certainly. Uh, Bullard looks to, they're starting to play with a little sense of urgency here, a little faster to the line. Yeah. And he looks, oh, there's a penalty flag, could be holding, and he's uh, hit as his arm goes forward, apparently, so it looks like an incomplete pass. But it's a live ball, they're saying, apparently. They're still playing, no whistle, now wow. there's a whistle. And is there a fumble on that play? And is that the Bears' ball? It looks like it. it I haven't seen a call yet by the it referee. Looked, it looked like a legal formation when they came out, the way the receivers were lined up. Someone has to be on, someone has to be off. But we'll see what the ref calls here. So it's a legal procedure on ball. Oh, wow. Bears' ball. Oh, it is. Okay. So wow. it's, yeah, yeah, there you go. So now it's going to be uh, Buchanan. Football. 
And once again, the bullet offense. They have to get it going over there. That's the end of the first quarter. The Buchanan Bears are leading the Bullard Knights by the score of 13 to 6. PlanSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from all across the country. PlanSports.com, high school sports lives here. What a game tonight, Mark. Yes. Uh, yeah, it looks like Bullard is more... Uh, you know, they're, they're playing with a more more urgency. They, uh, they're they probably somewhat surprised that they're in a hole again. They don't want to make that a habit during the season after what happened in Paso Robles. They, yeah, they beat Paso Robles last, last week, but they had to come back, and you don't want to be in those kind of positions going forward into the season. Most certainly, Mark. I mean, could it be, just could it be, that the Bullard Knights coming off a big win, ranked number four, four, ranked number four were maybe overlooking these Buchanan Bears? Possibly. I, I wouldn't think so because uh, I would think that they'd learned their lesson from last week uh, beating a, uh, a pesky Paso Robles team. So they probably learned that lesson. But I think maybe perhaps Buchanan wanted to uh, turn their program around. What happened last year, they were 3-8. Uh, they have a, a well-seasoned, uh, great coaching team led by uh, Mike Lloyd at the helm his 19th year as coach and now athletic director. So I think it's just a matter of Buchanan playing as well as they can and Bullard uh, playing as well as they can. But uh, we'll see in the, in the second quarter here. Well, certainly. Buchanan has the ball now. First and 10 at the 21. And back to pass. And he's looking for a receiver. He finally finds one. It's deflected and oh, it's incomplete. That could have been disastrous. So... He had a lot of time, though. Just oh, most certainly. Young man could have actually uh, pulled it down and just ran for it. You don't want to force it in there like that. You know, the defense is taught. It's a tip drill. Absolutely. So that was a dangerous pass. A lot of signs are given by the coach for uh, Buchanan. Here we go. We're going. We got man defense right here. We got one on one. Second down and 10 at the 21. They're bringing a backer. Okay, going up the middle here, but he's uh, he's tackled. He's he may lose a couple of yards on that play. Boy, forward was up to the up to the task on that well, one. Certainly a very aggressive bull and defense. Brought the backer, uh, went to man. That's belief in your defense right there. <laughs> so how many yards did they lose on that one? They lost about uh, I'd say about a couple yards. Third down and 11. So they got it open up here, I would think. They're gonna, they have uh, two wide receivers on both sides. Most of the, certainly. The look, look, look for the Bears' offense to go to number four down here at the corner. Adam, the widest receiver to our side, folks. Sosman. Sosman. He's looking for him. There he is. He, he there gets he is. All holding on that play. Oh, holding. that's passing interference. It's going to be first down for Buchanan on that one. If I could only predict a That would have been six right there. Yes. Pass interference, holding. So that's an automatic first down. They tried to go up top to number four, Adam Sosman. Well, he's definitely got the size Sosman does, 6'2", 175. Yeah, so the young man is an athlete. Yes. For what I understand, the young man attended a few camps in the summer. Uh, went to the University of Oregon. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. This should be first down here at the 11. And they give to the running back inside. He goes inside. He's gang tackled. Gets about maybe uh, three yards where he stopped. Oh, it's getting tough down in the trenches yeah. down there. <laughs> the big boys are most certainly playing. They're trying to do the same thing that Buller was doing on yes. the offense, trying oh, yeah. to you know, run inside. That's right. Power game. Yeah, trying to establish your dominance. Yes. There's Sosman on the near side once again, so you know they're going to be looking for him again. Here we go, one-on-one -on -one here. Here oh. we go. Oh, here he's he going is. inside. It's, oh! oh, oh, at his feet. 
He was open, too. Oh, man. Was he, do you think the quarterback was pressured? Yes, he was. Yeah, he threw off his back foot. Young man threw off his back foot straight into the turf. Tyler Fry, maybe pressured there, threw it before he was ready. Yes, it's got to be pitched. The right was there, wide open. Oh, he was, was waiting for open. it. Yes. Yeah, he was. That's He, he would have caught the ball and walked into the end zone. There was a lot of space between him and the goal line. Yes. Third down and six. The Knights are late, rotating over. Oh, a little, blitz. A little, little razzle dazzle give to the fullback, and he tries to get to about the five yard line. Got to go inside, give to the back there, makes a, makes a good cut. Okay, it looks like we have a timeout. Buchanan. 10.09 left in the second quarter. It remains Buchanan 13, Bullard 6. As the band plays the good, the bad, and the ugly. You're watching Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com, coming to you live from Fresno, California. My name is Mark Espinoza, alongside Paris Gaines. We're at McLean Stadium in Fresno, California. Coach Volt's got to be down there trying to figure out that night defense. We've got to take a shot here. I'm looking for the tight end. I'm looking for the, getting your quarterback into space. So if they score here, if Buchanan scores here, man, that'll be opening up a pretty good lead on Bullard. That really would put the pressure on them. And I think you said at the top of the, uh, of the uh, game that uh, the pressure's on Bullard coming into the game. Yes. And there'll be even more pressure if they, uh, if they score, if the Bears score on this one. Yes, now things become a sense of urgency. You know, then you start seeing stuff like Bullets start to throw the ball right. because they are behind. But once again, there's a, there's a reason why this team is ranked so high. Fourth down, they're going for it. And they give, oh, and he's going to run with the ball. He's done, oh, 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 man, he tried to get outside. Now is it a, a backward? Looked like it was a backward pass, but they call it incomplete. What do you think, Paris? It looked pretty <laughs> backward like a, yeah, to me. That looked <laughs> pretty like, I mean, folks, I'm up here holding my breath. <laughs> yes, that looked like a backwards pass to it me. It did. Yes, that ball was most certainly live. Wow. It was called incomplete. Okay. So Buller takes over on down. That's a win for the defense. Yes. To come away with no points. Yeah, that's that's tough. But, you know, they do pin uh, Bullard in uh, deep in their own territory. So it's going to test that uh, Bullard offense, their running game, see if they can power their way up to the, uh, the goal line. Most certainly. I'm not sure what the end of the round was, I, the option. I'm not sure what that was. But you need to toss that right out the playbook, Coach. So another give inside, and uh, he... Stacked up after, after about three yards on the play. He's second down. Second down and nine, maybe got a yard on the play. The Knights continue to, to run the ball here. Maybe trying to get some room as they're backed up in their own end zone right now. But with 9.34 left in the contest, oh, left in the half. Yeah, they got a long way to go. A long way to go. So they hurry up to the line. They have a huddle, but they hurry up to the line after that, that's for sure. So here's the, the handoff. Up the middle, there's some space out there. And he gets to about the, uh, looks like about the 16 or 17 yard line, make it the 16. A very conservative play calling. Well, that's gonna be very actually very the 11 yard line, excuse me. Third and four. Third and four, so what do you think, Paris? Do you I don't know, I'm looking for Coach Arax to take a shot here. He, he can't be thinking I'm just trying to get out of his half. And Shotgun formation, and he rolls out, throws to the open receiver on the near side, and he's tackled at about the 16-yard uh, line. Great route, great catch. First down on that play. 
First down, clock stop. So they have a shot here if they can score, uh, maybe going to the halftime tide uh, after being down by a couple touchdowns in the early going. Most well, certainly, I can't imagine Coach Arax just trying to eat this clock up and, and just get out of the half here. Now for the Bears, they cannot allow Buller to score and go into halftime and come up with that momentum. They cannot allow that to happen. All right, tight formation here with uh, three wide receivers on the far side. Shotgun formation, now there's a whistle. Timeout, Bullard. Mm. So as they talk things over. Now we were talking before we went on the air how uh, uh, the Bullard Knights, their, their coach, uh, Don Arax, uh, prefers the visiting side when he's, uh, <laughs> I guess, on the on the road. Or the yeah, the he's supposed to be the home the home team actually, I should say. And he's taking the the visiting side of the field. A little superstition, Mark. <laughs> a little superstition. I, after 19 years, I mean, no, 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 not 19 years. Uh, how long has Coach uh, uh, Don Arax? Yeah, Coach Arax has been coaching here. Um, I believe see. I believe he and Coach Volt uh, have a long history here in the Valley. And after that many years coaching, a little superstition is all right. Okay, here we go. Back from the timeout. First down and 10 at the 17 of uh, Bullard. Shotgun formation. Three wide receivers on the far side. And it's a give to the running back in motion. And he oh, gets wow. hammered down at the 15 for Fan no game, looks like. Fantastic hit. Good pursuit down the line, too. Yes, yes. So safety number four, Adam. Excellent read by the young man. Second down and 11. It looks like they, they lost a yard on that one. Ball on the 16-yard line. That's how you teach it, to run through the man just like that. Fantastic hit by the safety. There we go. Got a pass on here. This. There it is. He's got some room now, but there's a lot of traffic in there, so he fights the traffic to about the uh, maybe 21 yard line. Clock is running, 7 16 left in the half. Coach Arax has to be setting up something here to the wide side of the field. Uh, we just saw a screen to the short side of the field. Has to be thinking he's going to take a shot here with seven minutes left for the half. Third down and six. Yeah, it's going to have to be a pass because they don't have much time here. They can't be running the ball like usual. He looks deep. There it he is. Throws the there ball. it is. Oh, and it's oh, picked off at the 40. He's down to the 30, the 20, down to the 20-yard line, and he He's goes out of up. bounds. Looks We're like around the play. 12. At the 12 yard line. Flag on a play, folks. Was it holding? Not not holding. Doesn't look to be holding. Maybe a legal block in the back, maybe. We'll find out. Looks like it was picked off by uh, the DB, uh, Tyler Molesky. Check that was uh, Adam. Sosman. Excuse me. That was a great pick. Oh, he yeah. saw that coming. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Quarterback threw a little floater there. So Let's there's see. a big momentum change now. I mean, uh, what could have been a tie score in the end of the first now, first half could be a big momentum change here. Oh, little movement on the line. Looks like the defense made contact. You always taught on that D-line, the ball is the trigger. The quarterback giving the hard count, wow. and the defense falling forward once again. So will be first and five. Yeah. 
So Tyler Fry, the quarterback for Buchanan, has the ball. And it's placed at about the uh, 28, 27 yard line. And he's gonna give the ball inside. Mm. And not much room there. He's gang tackled and virtually has no gain on the play. Well, most positive mark on this drive. Coach Vogt will not be going for it on fourth down. I think he's gonna, if he has the opportunity to get some points on the board here right before the half, he's gonna go for the, for the field goal. Yeah, I would. After what happened last time. Yes. Yeah. So now it's second down. Three yards to go. Offset back. Man in motion. And the ball is given to the inside running back, and he gets to about the 20 yard line before he's tackled, brought down. He picks up the first down, Mark. Yeah. So 545 left in the game, first half, I should say. They're making some progress here. Yes, they are. Clock is running. Another give to the running back inside. Now there's some space in there, and he gets to about the uh, uh, maybe the 20-yard line. There's a flag on the play, too. Maybe a hold. Yep. That's going to set him back. Most certainly. This big guys up front. The saying goes, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Always trying to, <laughs> to gain the advantage. And right. You're running downhill like that. Probably it was on one of the offensive linemen, right? Of almost positive. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's a big penalty right there. Clock's wound. First down and twenty. Ball at the thirty-two now. I would definitely throw a pass at this point. You gotta take a shot. Yeah. You I gotta mean, take a shot. For that, that, that quick screen here, yeah. or that bubble. Give to the back again. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Right. Oh, he's taking the ball, and he's going to look for a receiver. Oh, no. Oh, and there's two receivers. Oh, wow. Open. He catches the ball, and he gets down to about the 15-yard line. That's got to be a mark. That's got to be a miscue on the defense. You have two wide receivers right next to each other, and, and where are you? Where's your well, he was bound to one of them bound to catch the, cat, catch the pass. It was a good chance there. <laughs> two receivers open. The wow. Same spot. Second and four at the 15. 4.30 left in the uh, first half. Tyler Fry in the shotgun. And there's a little bit of a pass what? rush going tight in. in. Oh, a tight end in the middle. And he gets down to about the five where he's brought down. Fantastic play call, Mark. That is a fantastic play call. Tied in wide open for the five-yard game. Young man just shot off the line and turned around, and it was wide open, just sat in a window. Quarterback put the ball right where he needed to be. Excellent catch. Timeout. No, they're just uh, resetting the play clock here. Bears knocking on the door here. Yeah, they're, they're controlling the time very well so far. Oh, another uh, jump by the defense, but they get back. And he's looking for the play. And give to the back. Give to the back. He's he got in. daylight all the way for the touchdown. Touchdown, Buchanan. They now lead 19 to six. Number eight on the score for Buchanan. Billy East, the running back, a senior, 5'10", 180 pounds. The bruising running back, fantastic wow. run inside. Who would ever thunk that the Buchanan Bears would be leading at this point in the game over the mighty Bullard Knights? Only the Buchanan faithful. <laughs> you got it. Okay, so we're going to go for the extra point here. Oops, the ball is mishandled, and uh, no kick is made, so it remains 19-6. to six. Well, both special teams coach coaches here, both uh, Coach Pickett, and I'm not sure who the special teams coaches for the Bears, they, they have to fix that. There's a gaping hole to the left side of their wings um, with, with an overload. You have to be ready. 
if you overload one side, you, you have to be ready. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of practice time uh, focused on the special teams this weekend. Yes. Uh, this week for the uh, both teams, actually. So 19 to 6, Buchanan leads with 3.49 left in the half. Now, is that two missed field goals, Mark? Uh, two the Bears? missed extra points? Yeah, two missed extra points for the Bears. Uh, I think so, I think so, yeah. Wow. Well, still, I mean, uh, they're 13 points down, so, you know, Bullard could come back for a couple of touchdowns and still win the game later. So those extra points that were not made, that were that were failed extra points, could could be critical near the end of the game. Well, most certainly, and that's what Coach Eric's is telling this team right now. He's he's telling this team like, look, we've taken their best shot, we've taken their best shot, and that's that's what he's telling this team right now. This is all they have. Okay, as they tee it up for the another kickoff here, following another Buchanan score. Number 84 will do the kickoff for Buchanan. Brett Arkalian. Two men back for Bullard, and the ball is kicked deep. And it's taken at about the uh, two-yard line. Oh, he almost slips and falls and gets to about the eight-yard line before he's dumped. Wow. Buchanan is pumped. Execution fuels emotion, folks. You know, for this series, last series, Mark, I did not see DeJounte O'Neal on the field. Right. Uh, one of one of Bullard's most explosive players on offense. Maybe he's injured. All right, here we go. First and 10 for Bullard at the 12. 13-point deficit. Give it to the, the back. Ball. Yep. Gets to about the 18 yard line. Make that the, uh, excuse me, the 13 yard line. The linebacker core very excited. Filled the hole quickly. Number six for the Buchanan Bears. Playing with great emotion. Second down and nine. I think Bullard has to, they have to have a big play to get them going on. Oh, most, yeah. They have to, yeah. like, give them a spark, get a spark somewhere. Something exciting. Get the fans into it. Here he, oh, wow, what pressure. Oh, he's sacked. down, he's sacked at about the four-yard line. Wow. Great penetration by the Bears' defense. And they're dominating on both oh, sides do of the oh, ball. Dominating there. up front. They are dominating up front right now. As, as Buller looked to take a shot right there, it looked like they were, they were going to unleash a deep one there. Wow. Well, you know, they, they're, they're expecting it. They, I'm sure the Buchanan Bear defense is expecting now a pass. Or, oh, most certainly. Although now uh, they may just want to play out the first half here. Well, they you don't want to take any big chances. You don't have too many plays in the playbook for third and 17. Another flag here on the play. Let's see what it's for. Wave oh, it off. I guess uh, no flag. Okay, a little confusion there. Third down and 17, so they're going to play it safe, give to the back inside, and he gets maybe a yard if he's lucky. So it's going to be fourth down, and they're going to have to kick with two Very minutes, deep. yes, with, with two minutes and, wow. I mean, what? you're giving the Bears the ball back with great field position Yeah, exactly, here. exactly. <laughs> with yeah, they could score, to put yeah. more points on the board. Oh, man. Mark, before the half. It'd be huge if they did score again. Maybe they're going to go for the, uh, the block. Maybe. They only got one man back, and they got most of their men up the line of scrimmage. So it could be just a... Uh, Block here. No, they tried to. Oh, but, you have an opportunity uh, for a great go. return here. Some, oh, he's got some good space here in front of him. And he's going. He's got the ball down to about the 30. He's down to about the 15 yard line, 25 yard line, I should say. And excellent return. 132 left in the half. Wow, they're they're sitting on the doorstep again here. Knocking again. 
Bears are playing with great confidence tonight. They, they truly believe that they can come in here and get this win tonight. Well, they should look like it so far. Okay, so the ball is going to be placed. Oh, there's a, there's a penalty on the play. Buchanan was caught for holding, so they're going to mark the ball back. So holding on the play on the uh, return. Is that a spot foul? And they're still talking about it. Now they're marking off the yardage. All right. So it's going to be placed. It's going to be about the 34-yard line. Make that the 33, to be exact. And they should open it up here. I would. You know, looking for the play, they're changing the play. Yeah, this would this would be huge if they scored. And you got Sosman on the near side, so look for him. That's right, bullet defense in cover two. Here we go. Here we go. He's going downfield now. He's looking to the other side though. And he's wide receiver. open. Wide open. And it's gonna be another wow. touchdown from Buchanan. Unbelievable. That cannot happen in cover two, folks. Wide open. The safety's job is to not get beat deep. That's number 23 Wow, Buchanan. The wide receiver, Chohan. As they line up for another kick, another That's point after touchdown. 6-2 receiver making the great play. Okay, they got to make this extra point, I would think. At this point, it's 25-6. to six. And the kick is it's good. good. Wow. All right. 20-point bowls now for Buchanan. Over wow. The highly favored Bullard Knights. On the go route, number 23, the young man makes a fantastic play. Now, how, how demoralized do you think Bullard is right now? Oh, almost certainly. I mean, in cover two, in cover two, your safety's job is to not let anything get behind you. Wow. They look lost out there, the secondary. Well, most certainly, Coach Arax and his staff, they, they're going to go into halftime. They're going to hit the whiteboard. You want to fix some things. You want to tell your com team to calm down, okay? And, and going in, if it is 6 to, to 26, you know, you just want to continue to tell your team, hey, that's their best shot. They're playing motivated, and they, they've, they've given us their best shot. Now, I would think that depending on, if, depending on where they get the ball, where the ball is returned to on the field, if they don't really have good field position, I would think that Bullard would just run out the clock. Oh, most certainly. But if they get good certainly. field position, it's a good return, maybe oh, they'll go for it. Yes, Get a quick yes, score yes. before the end yes. of the first half. I would not kick it deep to their deepest man right now. It was one of their better plays. I believe that's number seven. That's number s No, I believe that's number two. Darian Duckett, young man, is very explosive back there. I would actually kick the ball away from him. Let's, there we let's, go. Deep kick, mm. way deep, wow. And he's gonna, no. Touchback, Kirk. Touchback, <laughs> wow. Good kick, that's what you want from a kicker. <laughs> you wanna yeah. put it in the end zone every time. All right, so ball's gonna be placed at the 20. First down for Bullard. So with a minute 24, 80 yards to go, What does Coach Arax have under his sleeve? Offset back here. Defense backed way up. Prevana. Never a fan. Oh, give to the running back. They're going to play conservatively. Probably run out the clock here. DeJounte O'Neal on the carry. Second down and seven ball at the 23 for Bullard. They're down by 20 in the first half. This time runs down. Less than a minute left to go.
And high snap, ball is given inside of the running back. He gets maybe about three yards. Mark looks as if Coach Arax is just trying to get out of this half. Yeah, it appears to be the case here. Main thing is try to regroup during halftime, try to get some quick scores, and then go from there. Restore some of that confidence. But that's a big deficit. Third down and three. And he's going to look for the pass to the far sideline. Got to get out of bounds. And he gets kid. out of bounds. Out of Stop the clock. With about 14 seconds left to go, be first down. Minute 14. Well, if he can uh, maybe do some sideline passes and get out of bounds, good clock management, maybe mm -hmm. he can pull it off. It's a quick score at the end of the first half. Maybe. you gotta, you got to take a shot here. So if he can score a touchdown, maybe, it'd be 13 to 26. You're down by a couple of touchdowns. It could happen. It, it could happen. You know, with, the, with that Bear defense backed way up like that. Okay, a penalty, I guess. Oh, penalty. Point. So that moves the ball up to about the 49-yard line. So now they, they have some room to work with now. They have some decent field position. Well, most certainly, once again, on defense, you cannot let a man get behind you. All right, so they got three wide receivers on the near side, four wide receivers in total on the field. And the ball is snapped. He's looking to the left side, near side. There's somebody open at the 49-yard line. He gets to about the 45-yard line. Like I said before, out. I am not a fan of the prevent defense. Oh, and that, that is it. That's the, the end of the game, or end of the first half, I should say. And was there a he might, penalty he, on yeah, the play? Yeah, he may have gotten out of bounds. So there's some time left. Scoreboard shows zero, but uh, he may have uh, gotten out before the clock ran out. Or maybe that is the end of the first oh, half. Called it. Yeah, that is in the. That's that's the end. That's the end of the first half of play with the Buchanan Bears leading the Bullard Knights by a score of 26 to six. We'll be back in a few moments with the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Don't go anywhere. It's Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run us to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just Holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two, get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat 
Pleasant Grove 30 to 24. Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over, dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way, gets it to Grant, oh. slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the Stag. Runner at third is Chavez, eight to two the score. Bottom of the seventh, the one two. Popped in the air, this should do it. Corda Posse says it's mine. Now he's fading on it. And he can't make the catch, but Gaff comes in from center field and does. Congratulations to the St. Mary's Rams, a three-peat. They win it eight to two against Franklin to take the series two games to none. This is time to run an offensive set that you've done all through the season in practice. Yeah. And you also, you know, you get it to your to your hottest player right now, just like they're getting it to Eichhorst right here. He's going to try to create some space, find somebody on the backside that's open. Eichhorst flush out to the right. Oh, breaks free of a player. Eichhorst on his own, shoots and scores, bounces the shot home. Kuz can't handle the shot. Eichhorst takes off the shirt and the helmet. And how about that? Alex called it. Eichhorst, after sustaining the injury in the third quarter of play, has scored the game winner with 22 seconds gone in the overtime period. Dog pile on the field. Marin Academy take it. A fantastic finish to this game. And well, I hope his other ankle isn't hurting after this. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10, the five. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter sets under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run, breaks through, four tackles, and now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, oh Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near the goal line. Keep those Lowell fans quiet over there. Lum sets it up for Pang. Long, it's out. Low, a magnificent seven titles in the San Francisco section in dramatic style as they pull out a fantastic victory over a spirited Galileo Lions team. They win the fourth game, 31-29, and they take the 2012 Academic Athletic Association San Francisco section title. Officials say no five-second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side, Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. 
McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game, 21 to 20, with 25 seconds to play. The senior McMorrow with a huge kick, not the longest of his career, but the biggest of his career. Oh, St. Augustine leads it 21 to Already 20. lining up. They won't even have to run that one more play. They just act yeah, yes. Why bother? So there you have it. Welcome to the PlayOnSports.com halftime show coming to you from McLean Stadium in Fresno, California. I'm Mark Espinoza. Alongside Paris Gaines, our halftime score is the Buchanan Bears surprisingly ahead 26 and the Bullard Knights 6. Yes. Paris, uh, we had a uh, very surprising first half. We had uh, Bullard coming into the game, uh, the fourth ranked team in the central section against a team from Buchanan, the Bears, who are coming off a 3-8 and eight season of last year. Uh, we have uh, a, a potential mismatch, but it seems like the team that is winning right now is a team that that is highly rated instead of the Bullard Knights. Do you think uh, Bullard has uh, been overrated coming into this game, possibly? And what, what do they need to do, Bullard, to get back into the game? They have a 20-point deficit right now. Well, right now, Mark, the, the contest has been totally one-sided right now. I think Bullard has just been shocked. Okay, right now, Coach Arax and his staff are in there trying to wake his fourth-ranked team up right now. He's telling those kids to look, stay calm, stay calm. We've taken their best shot. Okay, we're going to come out, we're going to get the ball back, and we're going to march it down the field. Stay calm, execute, and we can come back and win this game. On the other side of the ball, the Bears, just they simply just believe that they can win this contest. They, they don't care about ranking. They don't care about who's number four in the county. They're playing with great emotion and high confidence. Their offense, they're clicking on all cylinders right now with the tip pass, with the fumble. They, everything is working right now. The question is, Mark, can they keep this up for two more quarters? Well, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, Paris, that Buchanan had the first possession of the game, the first half. Yes. Okay? So that means that Bullard's going to get the ball back That's in right. the second half. That's right. The first possession. That's right. So I'm thinking if they can get a score on that first possession, it's going to make a, a, a score of 13 to 26. So then they'd be within good striking distance of scoring a couple more touchdowns and possibly pulling out the game. Do you see that as a possibility? Oh, most certainly. And that's what Coach Arax and his staff is in the locker room telling them right now. We get the ball back. We are going to establish what happens in the second half of football. They believe they're going to get this ball and march it right down the field and score, most certainly. If that happens, that's going to be one hell of a game coming up in the second half on this Blue Moon Friday with Play On Sports. That's going to do it for the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Friday Night Football will return in just a few moments with the start of the second half right here on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. Three sixteen left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run this to the 5, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow! He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just... <laughs> holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two, get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation 
on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown. Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sac Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30 to 24. Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side. Cut shot. Kept alive. Back in one by Cathedral. And this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide. And the Cathedral Dons have won the title. 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Oh. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the Stag. Runner at third is Chavez. 8-2 to two the score. Bottom of the seventh, the 1-2. Popped in the air, this should do it. Corta Posse says, it's mine. Now he's fading on it, and he can't make the catch, but Gaff comes in from center field and does. Congratulations to the St. Mary's Rams, a three-peat. They win it 8-2 against Franklin to take the series two games to none. But this is time to run an offensive set that you've done all through the season in practice. Yeah, and you also, you know, you get it to your to your hottest player right now, just like they're getting to Eichhorst right here. He's going to try to create some space, find somebody on the backside that's open. Eichhorst flush out to the right. Oh, breaks free of a player. Eichhorst on his own, shoots and scores, bounces a shot home. Coos can't handle the shot. Eichhorst takes off the shirt and the helmet. And how about that? Alex called it. Eichhorst, after sustaining the injury in the third quarter of play, has scored the game winner with 22 seconds gone in the overtime period. Dog pile on the field. Marin Academy take it. A fantastic finish to this game. And, well, I hope his other ankle isn't hurting after this. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Helix! And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter sets under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, oh Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple of yards downfield. They hit him again near the goal line. Keep those Lowell fans quiet over there. Lum sets it up to Pang. Long, it's out. Low, a magnificent seven titles in the San Francisco section in dramatic style as they pull out a fantastic victory over a spirited Galileo Lions team. They win the fourth game. 
31-29, and they take the 2012 Academic Athletic Association San Francisco section title. Official say no five-second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side, Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. Is. They've been wanting that all game. <coughs> You're watching PlayOnSports.com's presentation of Friday Night Football live from Fresno, California. I'm Mark Espinoza with Paris Gaines. The Buchanan Bears lead the Bullard Knights 26-6 as we get ready to start the second half of action. We've had a shocking first half. Uh, Bullard comes into the game as the fourth-ranked section team against a Buchanan team that was 3-8 and eight last year under the uh, longtime tutelage of Coach Mike Voigt. He's been at the helm for 19 years, but Coach... Uh, Boyd has been doing a tremendous job in the first half, shocking uh, Bullard uh, with uh, some good offense. Uh, Buchanan came out with two quick scores in the first half, and we have uh, both teams back on the field now, as you can see. Once again, uh, Buchanan Bears are in red, white, and blue with the red stripe down the sides of their pants. You've got the Bullard Knights in the navy blue jerseys. And uh, so we're about to start the... Uh, the second half here, and at the start of the second half, you have uh, Bullard getting the ball back on the kickoff. So there's a, there's a big deficit they have to come back from, but uh, they did it last week in, against Paso Robles. In Paso Robles, 33-14 to 14 was the final score there as Bullard came back to beat them after, uh, after two quick scores late in the first half of that game. But now we've got a 20-point bulge here at the start of the second half. So we'll see what... Uh, what uh, Bullard can do at this start of the second half. I think if they can score a quick touchdown on their first possession drive, maybe the length of the field, and score, then then they possibly could be within two uh, two touchdowns and a couple of uh, uh, point after touchdowns to uh, make the game a really exciting game down the stretch here on this blue moon Friday night on PlayOnSports.com. So we're here at McLean Stadium in Fresno, California. Very nice evening. A uh, good crowd on hand for this uh, this battle between the Fresno team and the uh, Clovis team. So, Paris, what do you think are the keys to the second half for Bullard in its comeback? To, to come out and start fast. <clears throat> and can they, can they play from behind? Can they come out here, establish a tempo, and simply play from behind? They have to believe that they can win this game, you know, down 6-26, to 26, remain calm, play with a great tempo, and come from behind and win this game. Okay, so we uh, will see soon enough. It's a nice night, nice breeze. And uh, Buchanan is going to be uh, teeing it up here at the 40. And it looks like the Buchanan side is all fired up. Its fans are all dressed up in their Bear Nation red T-shirts here. And uh, as we await the kickoff, at the start of the second half here at McLean Stadium. Here we go. A uh, kick uh, is bobbled there at the 10. It's picked up, and he takes it up to about the 30-yard uh, line, close to the 30 at least. It'll be first down for Bullard in the second half. So once again, we've got Bullard here uh, trying to uh, get a fast start, I would believe. Paris, uh, what do you think they'll be doing on the first series of plays? Well, certainly. You have to come out here and simply take the lid off the jar. You want to stop being conservative, and you want to play fast right here. I don't think they're going to come out and try to reinvent the wheel, but they want to look to be a little bit more explosive in this second half. Three wide receivers on the near side as the ball is hiked, snapped. He's looking downfield. There he goes. Pass up there the middle, is. and there's a wide oh, opening, but he overthrows the receiver. Incomplete. Wide open, number 11. Number 11, that was uh, intended for Grant Ar Arlekalian, a senior, wide receiver, 5'8", 145 pounds. Was wide open, but it was overthrown by the quarterback for uh, Bullard. So it'll be the second down and 10. So uh, 
You're right. They're, uh, they're, it looks like they're going to be opening up the offense here. They've got nothing to lose. They, they've got to make some kind of uh, uh, some kind of big play to get them back into the game. Well, certainly. You take a shot like that, you need to land it. And a give to the you know, fake, and the quarterback takes the ball himself on the keeper, and he gets to about the 28-yard line. Fantastic fake. Looks like a four-yard gain. And it's going to be uh, third down. And the ball is placed at about the 27-yard line. I think that almost a 28. So it'll be third and six. This is a very key down here early in the most second certainly. half. They must convert this. And another keeper to the uh, give oh, to the man. Win for the running defense. back, and they were waiting for it. Win for the Buchanan. defense. Wow, that's another win for the Buchanan defense. First possession for Bullard. They stop him on fourth, third down. So it's going to be fourth down as Bullard uh, lines up in a punt formation. Back deep for uh, Bullard is uh, makes that Buchanan is Billy East, 5'10 senior running back. That's not how the Knights planned on uh, coming out in the second half, but uh, most certainly a win for the defense. Oops, ball is snapped low, and his kick is off, and he gets it at about the 36-yard line, gets to about it's the 40, and he's got open space there, and he gets down to about up. the 39-yard line. And there's, a, there's a penalty on the field. Could be holding on the return. Yes, looks to be holding, yes. So that could be coming back here. There's been some penalties during the game, not a lot, but there's been some key penalties in the game that have hurt both clubs. So they're talking it over. It looks like it's going to be against Buchanan on the return. And they're marking off. Negating the, uh, an excellent return. Wow. Uh, looks like illegal use of the hands. So somebody uh, was uh, holding, I, apparently, on that play. So the ball is really going to be brought back. And look, that's going to be placed at the 20, 30 yard line. I think that's the 30 yard line for Buchanan. First and 10. Here we go. Let's see if this defense can play inspired here. Yeah, they have. Bullard has to step it up also on defense if they want to get back in this game, get the ball back, get better field possession. They're going to have to step it up, like well, you said. 11 hats on the ball. Here we go. And he's looking downfield. He's there opening up. Why not? Look at down the middle. And it's received right at the 40, 47 yard line. Wow, great, great pass, great catch. Right up the seam. You don't want to start. You don't want to start like that if, if, if you're the Buller Knights. That gives them extra confidence now. Most certainly. The ball was actually a little underthrown there. Yeah, it was. If yeah, he could have gone further if it was right on the money. So we have a uh, Shotgun formation for Buchanan. Ball is gifted to the running back inside. He got some daylight on the near side, and he's oh, upended right at about play. the 37-yard line. That's holding. Wow, another holding penalty against Buchanan. The Bears right now are just completely shooting themselves in the foot right now. Because they look good. They look crisp. It's just that maybe that's because of the penalties. That's, that's why right. they're getting that open. Open space Most there. Well, certainly, Mark. You don't want to take two steps forward and then another step back. Uh, it's it's simply execute, 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 execute. And you have to eliminate mental errors just like that, causing your team to back up. Wow. That's going to place the ball at the uh, 40, 42 yard line. First down and 20 for the Buchanan Bears. And another give to the running back inside. He goes to the near side. And, and he's breaks, running, he breaks the down to the 40, down to the 30, down to the 20. He's down to the 15 wow. and the 14-yard line. Mark, First that, down. That was the same exact play. Same play. Fantastic run. Ball wow. on the outside arm, down the sideline. How sweet. Makes an inside move, continues to run. Fantastic game. First down and 10. 
Now they give to the running back inside. There's tremendous blocking on the line now. They're just firing out on all cylinders getting, now. Getting great push up front. That's what it's all about. We have a night down. We have a timeout on the field as the player is down. Looks like uh, it's going to be for Bullard. Trying to get the player's number here. Number 77 for Bullard. That's uh, going to be uh, Thomas Williams, junior offensive uh, or defensive lineman, 5'10", 300 pounds, 77. Well, you never want to see this, folks, on, on either side of the ball. Looks like it's something maybe uh, possibly with his knee as the trainer is looking at his knee there. Yeah, you don't want to see a knee injury now. No. Wow. Young man is back to his feet. Jogging off on his own. Yeah, he seems That's a good to be, uh, sign. Yeah, that it. is a very good sign. He's just probably shaking up a little bit. So Buchanan's now on the knocking on the doorstep once again here early on in the second half. Ball at the uh, nine-yard line, second and four. As the play is being called from uh, Coach Don Arax. This could spell disaster for the Bullard faithful here. I'll make that uh, Mike Voigt, excuse me. Here he is, he's looking to pass. And he's, oh, incomplete, in and out of the hands of number 80, 21, I should say. That's Cedric Castro. He almost had it. He almost, like, threaded a needle with that pass. Almost. Almost, the young man Cedric Castro almost came up with a big play. You just there had the feeling. Bears. Yeah, you just had the feeling that Buchanan just just has his confidence. It shows right through. Well, most certainly, most certainly, as, as the young people call it, they're playing with that swag right now. Third down. Again, Sweet. he's looking the pass open. inside. Oh. oh, in and out of the hands at number 23. Wow. Not sure if the young quarterback saw his running back on the swing route, but he was wide open. He could have caught that pass and, and ran to Fresno State. <laughs> That's really, how man. wide open he was. Yes. He could have been in tomorrow's game, the Fresno State and Weaver State, the way he was most, running that route. Most certainly. <laughs> okay, we're going to go for the field goal here. Buchanan. Ball is snapped, it's kicked, and it's no, no good. good. Well, right left, folks. looks like Bowler dodged that bullet. Most well, certainly. So they get the ball back on downs. And let's see if the Knights can come back. Still plenty of time, albeit uh, they have to strike uh, pretty soon here to make it a game. Uh, if, if they can't maintain any consistency in offense, it's going to be very difficult as time winds down here in the it's second It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But once again, Buchanan knocking on the door, coming away with no points. All right, first down and 10. Passing situation appears to be. Oh, the oh, ball. That ball is that fumble. Goes to his hand. Oh, it's a He's got the ball, and he recovers the ball at the five-yard line. Another turnover. Another miss. Wow, wow for the Buller Knights. That's Coach, that's amazing. Coach Arax, is, he has to be shaking his head right now. It's a crazy game. I just knew it was going to be a crazy game. Just It just started out that way. A lot of superstition here going on tonight, folks. <laughs> yes, so here we go. This is uh, first down and 10 for Buchanan. Golden opportunity for him. And we give to the running back. You know, the quarterback keeps the ball on a keeper. And he throws an interception. interception. Oh, amazing. And looks like it's going to be a touchback. Yeah, that's a touchback. Yeah, touchback. They get the ball back. Is that? Wow. Wow, what a turn of events, folks. 
Both teams are making some mistakes here early on. Uh, so far, it hasn't really hurt anybody big time, but uh, as you get uh, later in the game, if it keeps happening, then something big is going to happen, and it's not going to be good for the team losing the, losing the ball. Well, the Buchanan Bears have had an opportunity to close the lid on this game. All right, another keeper inside. A little bit of running room. Gets some daylight there. Good game for the back. Down to about the, uh, looks like about the seven yard area, eight yard line. Well, Mark, you know what they say when you allow a team to stick around and stick around and stick around, right, eventually right. something bad's gonna happen here. Yeah, but they have to score. I mean, Bullard has to score. They, they can't afford to turn the ball over, or go three and out. They need, they need a big play. Sounds like a cliche, but it's the truth. And another gallon, some, some room on the uh, near side here, and he gets to about the 18 yard line. Close to a first down. First down for Bullard, so maybe first this down. will be the start of something for him. Seven fifty-five left in the third quarter. Buchanan is still leading here at McLean Stadium over uh, Bullard, twenty-six to six. As Bullard comes out from their huddle, lining up two wide receivers on the near side. Looks like another running play, and it is to the inside, off tackle, and looks like there was hardly any gain on that play. Maybe a yard or two. So it's going to be second down, about eight to go. Looking to see Coach Arax take a shot here. Yeah, he's got to do something. Okay, second down and eight for Bullard. And the ball is snapped. He goes to the far side looking downfield, and it's incomplete. Looking for number 16, Jesus Parra, but he was not open. The ball was uh, overthrown. So it'll bring up third down and eight. I think the key, if they want to uh, come back in this game, is is to throw something deep because uh, if they throw something short and it's picked off like it has been before, then they really would be in trouble. But uh, we'll see here on third down how it shapes up. And again, he's looking. Oh, and the ball is deflected, but it's still caught by the wide receiver on the near side, number 28 for Bullard, Josh Newman. So we got some yardage on that play. Excellent play by the defensive back, Kalan Milton, come up on the stop. But it's going to be a fourth down. And they're going to be in punt formation here. Fourth I down and five. I can't imagine Coach Arax just continue to be conservative. You don't like think this. he's going to fake it? No, I guess not. Oh, and a good snap. Oh, almost blocked. It's a short punt. Very short. Bad kick, but it takes a a Bullard bounce all the way down to about the 47-yard line. So a nice kick after all that pressure. Almost disaster again for the Bullard Knights. Wow. So let's see if, if Buchanan can add to their, their total here. They've already scored 26 points all in the first half. So... If they score another touchdown here, it might be over. Well, sir, well, they've been in the red zone three times. They've come away with no points now. So, so now is the time. And they play conservatively, give it the handoff in the inside, and he's just devoured number 28. And, and the ball's like loose. A fumble, fumble. And they may have recovered their own fumble, though. Buchanan. But there's a loss on the play, and the ball is downed at about the 40 six or 47 yard line. You have to tell those backs to cover that ball up. The defense right now is looking to, to strip that ball and to rip it out by any means. I don't understand why people are losing the ball. It's not, I mean, good conditions. Uh, maybe they're just not uh, being safe with the ball. I mean, they're being sloppy. Okay, so we have another here. pass. He's looking and it looks like he was almost 
downing the ball. Looks like he was like throwing into the ground. It looks like play. a screen, um, more than likely, Mark. A screen that just went wrong. A smart decision by the quarterback to just get rid of the ball. Yeah, we talk about holding on to the ball, Mark. Uh, one thing young backs need to learn is that the four or five pressure points of holding the football. So it's going to be third and long for Buchanan. Third and 16 at their 47-yard line here in the third quarter. For that Joe. Oh, and he's looking downfield again. He's running for his life now. He gets away, throws, and it's ah, incomplete. So it'll be fourth down, and they'll have to kick. That's a win for the defense. Well, so far, Bullard uh, has been holding him. They've been a little lucky at times, but you need some luck if you're going to come back. Now, can the night offense just simply get something going here on this series? They have only scored one touchdown so far. That's kind of surprising with their ground game. Oh, most certainly loaded with talent at the skill position. Here's the kick. Mm. And it's a good wow. kick. It's way, that is a way deep. It's in it's the end, end zone. zone. Touchback. Nice kick. Excellent kick. Nice kick by Tyler Molesky, the senior, 6'1", 185-pounder. He's very talented. All right, Bullard gets the ball back. 5.06 left in the third quarter, down by 20. It's time to, it's time for action mm -hmm. for Bullard. You most certainly have to take a shot. Have to take a shot. Another running play. Oh, Did nothing. they lose the oh, football another again? Fumble, another fumble. Wow. Unbelievable. How many fumbles is that for uh, Bullard now? That's got to be three. Three fumbles on the night. Now lead the Bullard Knights by a stunning score of 33-6 to here at McLean Stadium on Friday Night Football with Play on Sports. Most certainly. Most certainly. Coach Vogt, I take that back. Early on in the show, I said you should throw that play out of the playbook. Oh, wow. Did you hear the cheer? The cheer of the uh, Buchanan fans is just exudes confidence. Well, what do you do now, Paris, if you were Bullard? I mean, would you would you throw the kitchen sink at him? Would you try to throw some bombs? What would you do to try no, to at well, least try to get back <laughs> into the game at least? Well, you want to just con continue to try uh, to gain some confidence right now. You don't want to – remember, you do have to play next week. That's true. You don't want to try to throw everything in your playbook out of them, but you want to continue to try to get some momentum and try to tell your kids to just keep on going. What you want to see right now, you want to see effort, and you don't want to see your kids quit right now. You want to see them continue to attack and continue to go. Here's the kick. It rolls across the ground there all the way to the uh, – There's a seam. He's, he's got a, a seam, seam up the middle. He's got some running room. This could be it. What moves? What great – what a great return that was. Number three for Bullard. That's DeJounte O'Neal on the return. That's a dynamic back we, we talked about early on. Uh, a young man who, who hasn't had many touches tonight, who I thought would get a numerous round of touches. Um, he's, he's yet to really touch the ball. I, think, I believe he only has five or six touches tonight. That could be the spark, possibly. You know, he's playing all out. First down and 10 at their 39. Oh, fake keeper by the quarterback. He goes up the field. He's got running room all the way. He's going down for the touchdown. Down. Oh, I thought he was all the way down to about the 10 yard line. Great run by the quarterback for Bullard. That's a touchdown saving tackle by Cedric Castro. Actually, that was by uh, Nino Pacheco. Well, they're not giving up, that's for sure. Yes. 
Here we go, another keeper up the middle. They've got some running room. Looks like they've got some, some energy now. Looks like Bullard is beginning to pick it up a little bit. They know that they don't have much time if they want to make a game of it. They're playing, still playing with a lot of pride. Well, with four minutes to go in the third quarter here with a, uh, another quarter to go, I mean, this could be the spark that the Bullard Knights need. Yeah, they're going to start having to uh, speed up their game. They will certainly have to punch this one in. Here's the pass. Oh, it's almost picked off. That was a dangerous pass. Extremely dangerous as a linebacker dropped in his zone. There was like three or four uh, bear defenders there all waiting, foaming at the mouth. Okay, it's going to be second down and six for Bullard at the eight-yard line of Buchanan. They're down by 27 points. Offset back. Oh, here we go. Ooh, a little keeper. Oh, oh fantastic wow. tackle. Wow. wow. A little trickery there. Didn't work too well. A little razzle-dazzle, but... Fantastic by the backer. Shot the gap. Buchanan was there. That's how it's done, folks. Textbook by the backer. And he is hyped. The young man is hyped number six. Just you can tell that Buchanan was very prepared for this game. Mm -hmm. It's fourth down. They're going for it. They have nothing to lose. Oh, almost caught in the backfield. And it's there's a, a penalty. Flag. Late penalty flag. Is it holding? If it is, then they're probably going to decline it. Yes. Mm. So it's declined. First down, you can. And they take over, take over on downs. Once again, the night offense continues to shoot themselves in the foot. Well, let's see what uh, what kind of game plan Buchanan has now. Are they going to start to uh, pour it on? Are they going to play conservatively and maybe stick to a running game? Well, you got to chew some of this clock up. I mean, even backed up this far into your own end zone, you have to get the ball out of there. So look for them. For the Bears to run the football right here. Right. And they're mm -hmm. in the yeah, give. They, they, they're running the ball all right. And they get a few yards, not much. It'll be second down. Ball's going to be at the 10, so they got about a yard on the play. Be second down and 10, currently. And a second down and 9, give or take a yard. It gives them a little space there, a little room to work with. Passing situation, and they will pass. No, they give to the running back, and he is covered up quickly by the Bullard defense. Well, time is most certainly running out. Third down for the Bullard Knights. Less than two minutes left in the third quarter. We're here in Fresno, California at McLean Stadium. Changing of the play here. Wow. As the Bears look to the sideline. The Knights are coming on the blitz here. Okay, oh. too much time oh, apparently. Game. I think so. Delay of game. Five-yard penalty. They'll push the ball back. That's one more way. To, one more way to take more time off the clock. Well, most certainly for the night defense right now. You need to make a play. You need to stop. You need. You need something going here. Well, he's going to pass from his own end zone. Daring pass, and it's caught. But it's incomplete as he was out of bounds, apparently. Punting unit coming on. So they at least stopped him here. 
They'll get the ball back. Bullard has to find a way to score. They need to score. One, they scored that one touchdown. That was, uh, I believe, in the second quarter. And they haven't scored since. They're going to get the ball back right now with fantastic field position. Oh, Going for Bowman's the block. High snap. He gets the ball off. Good kick. Booming kick. High kick. Opportunity for a great return here. He's got some space. He's got one man oh, to beat. Blocking the back. A flag in the, on the field. And he's got some space. He may go all the way. But it may be called back as he gets down to about the 10-yard line. Inside the 10. Flag on the play. That's coming back. Let's see what the call is. Holding. It's coming back, like you said, Ferris. Wow. That's got to hurt once again. Big play negated by a holding call. Okay, so it'll be first and 10 for Bullard. Ball is going to be marked back to the 39-yard line. So that makes a big difference. It's the not night, bad, though. It's no, not it's, bad. it's not. No, not bad at all. But the night offense cannot continue to play conservative here. Now is a sense of urgency. You have to go pedal to the metal. Let's go. They need to score right now in this possession. Oh, they were waiting for him. Goes nowhere. You know, the Buchanan offense has been very impressive tonight, but also the Buchanan defense has been equally as impressive. I mean, they've, they've dominated the, the line of scrimmage. Uh, they've bottled up that vaunted Bullard running game. And... Uh, They've taken advantage of them at the line of scrimmage. Oh, man, they're, they're playing fast out there. Rallying to the ball. Another whistle. That's right. Looks like a receiver up top for the Bullard Knights. A little movement before the snap. Ball is going to be marked off again against Bullard. Down to about the 32-yard line. He's second down and 17. The Buchanan Bears just replaced their left corner out of the game number 21 and into the game number 15. Carlos Rios. What is the timeout? And that's the end of the third that's quarter. The third quarter. So once again, we have the end of uh, the third quarter where the Buchanan Bears are leading the Bullard Knights 33 to 6. While we have a break in action, folks, stay tuned for PlayOnSports.com post game show where we will select the player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from our ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports on PlayOnSports.com. So now it appears that Bullard has to be playing for pride. I mean, it's unless there's a miracle, I mean, they have to play for pride and, and gain some kind of momentum going into this fourth quarter as just a way to get back on track, so to speak, so they can get prepared for next week's game. Well, most certainly, Mark, and I do believe in miracles. But um, if that miracle is going to happen, it needs to happen right now, and they need to start fast. Now, I've seen a lot of things in football. It, it, it can happen, but the Knights, the, the Bullard Knights, they, right now, they need to get something going right now. First and 10, or make that second and 17. Second and 17. He's looking downfield, pressure, 
and it's overthrown too high for the receiver. Intended for number 23 for Buller, that was Ahart Jackson. Fantastic pressure on the quarterback right there. Yeah, I think I think it's just a matter of at this point you can and their their defensive line is just they're just going after the quarterback. They have they're just pinning their ears back and just going for it. That's right, go get them, boys. That's what the coach is saying. That's just that's they know loose. they're going to have to pass. Most certainly. So that's all there is to it. I mean, four Corner. down linemen. Corners are playing loose here. There we go again. Another pass up top. And no one's there. Covered downfield. Intended for number 11. That was Richie Brandt. But he was covered downfield. There was no way that they could get it to him. It's going to make down, make it fourth down for Buller. And they're going to have to kick. For the Bears' offense to just run Back the ball. Back deep is number eight for uh, Buchanan. Ball is kicked, and he gets the ball. He tries to make a catch, and he does. No, he oh. he muffs it, but it looks like he recovered the ball at about the 32-yard line. Look Three for the Bears down. to come out here and just continue to run the ball. Look for that zone read. Continue to, to get that clock down. You don't want to show too much for next week. You just want to get out. You want to run the football. That's true. You don't want to have any serious win. injuries. Most certainly not. There we go. There it is. Up the middle for a few yards. The second down. Ball is going to be placed at the 34-yard line, so it's getting about two yards on the play. Second down and eight for Buchanan. And it looks like they're going to pass, though. Well, they, they had that formation, but now it's a handoff, and he gets to about the 37-yard uh, line. So just a little bit of... Uh, Slowing it down just a yeah, tad just, bit. I mean, they're, they're in no looks. hurry. Yeah. They're in no hurry. The offense, they're getting to the play from the sideline, but in no hurry. Yeah, they're showing like pass on every play, but they're actually handing it off. Giving here we go on looks. the blitz here. Yeah. The Knights. Oh, drop it oh, back to the zone. Oh. Here we go. Pa oh, way right. deep. Number four, Sosman. He wow. gets the ball. What a catch by number four, Adam Sosman. Down to the 20-yard line of Buller. Young man came up with the ball Boy, again. He's and been all over the field all over the All over the field. The young man's having a fantastic night. And, yes, I did say wow again. Great catch. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of the great players in tonight's game. Leading 6-33. to 33, And they continue to, to go downfield. And I can't believe they just threw deep. I guess They're going just, for the yeah, gusto. Well, hey, well, I guess you're just taking what the <laughs> defense is giving you. I mean, yeah, you have to. I mean, we're still playing here. We're still this is still the game here. You still got to go for it. Oh, and they go for it inside, and there's a minimal game, maybe a half a yard on the play. Word to the wise number six, young man, never leave your feet. He's second down and eight for Buchanan at the 20 yard line of Bullard. And the handoff to number six, he goes to the far side. He mm. gets some running room, he gets down to about the uh, 11 yard line. Tough run. Young man number six, Robert. Scanlon. Robert Scanlon, tough running inside, man. Outside. Planted his foot, turned inside. Third down and one. Well, they should get some points here, I would think, if they can't score the touchdown. 
and they give to the running back. He tries to go inside again. Once again, that's uh, that number six, Robert yeah, Scanlon. Yeah, Scanlon. He's having some work. First down for Buchanan. They're knocking on the door again. Yeah, they're just having their way with uh, Buller right now. Oh, getting great push up front they, as they continue to just to run the ball at will. Another give to Scanlon. He goes up the inside to the right, and he's met by a host of Buchanan tacklers, or Buller tacklers, I should say. It's going to be second down. Well, folks, with eight minutes left to go in the fourth, it has been a very long night for the Bullard Knights. Yes. Uh, somehow they have to uh, maintain their composure. They have to play to the final whistle. Buchanan's shown a lot of heart here. They've uh, they've worked very hard tonight. Tonight, and uh, they come. They look like they've come really, really prepared. Well, draw here against Scanlon. Gets the ball again, and he gets to about the five-yard line. Make it about the four. Excellent run on the draw, delay draw. Give to Scanlon. Dragging defenders to the goal line. It's going to be third and three at the four-yard line. I would expect another run here. I would, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, yes, it's most certainly going to be another run. For that Buller Knight defense, you need to stop right here. You cannot allow them to score. Another run up the middle with Scanlon, but they up, got up. him. He's not getting Bottled He's up. not getting the go. first down. He's not giving Good. up, though. <laughs> he, he's battling hard there. Got players shooting the gaps right there. The Knight defense trying to deny the Bears another touchdown. It's going to be fourth down. What are they going to do? They're going to go for it, I guess. Why not? I don't know here. With six minutes to play in the game, you're up uh, six to 33, and you're passing the ball on fourth and four. Well, if they don't make it, then at least uh, they've uh, got Right tackle move. Oh. Right tackle move. So is that going to change the call? Do you think they're going to go Oh, most well, certainly. Mo mo most certainly. And, and he's kicking sending team, in the yeah. kicking team. Yeah. I was thinking if, you know, if they didn't have that penalty, if they, if they didn't make the first down on that play, then, then they at least it would pin Bowler deep in their own territory. Very true. Very true. But once again, you know, when you're up six to thirty-three, I, I may I may have just kicked the field goal right there. They they need to work on their field goals anyway. <laughs> yeah, their kicking game. Their kicking game, most well, certainly. Yeah, the snaps have been a little uh, inefficient tonight. And here's the kick. Best one. And of it night. is good. So that puts three more points on the board for Buchanan. It's now 30-66 over Bullard with 5:39 left in the game. So this is definitely going to uh, add to the stock of uh, Buchanan. I mean, well, certainly. coming into this game, uh, according to the top 20 rankings, according to the Fresno B, uh, Buchanan came into the game 13th ranked uh, in the Division I section, uh, central section. So I would imagine they'll be move, moving up the almost, first game. Almost oh, certainly. Most certainly. They will most certainly uh, be moving on up. And uh, the Buller Knights will most certainly be moving on down. Now, what would you do? Would you, if you were uh, uh, the coach of uh, Bullard, if you were, uh, you know, Don Arax, would you put in some of your uh, backups right now? Would you start maybe taking some out of the starters, taking out some of the starters? Well, sorry, you thinking about next week. You're thinking about next week, um, who we have to play, with the score being 6-36 to 36 right now. 
uh, you possibly might want to pull some starters. But at the same time, you, you want to continue to work on things. Right, right. You want to put some things on film, like, hey, this is what we did well, this is what we need to work on. Here's the kick. And it's a short kick, taken up at the 10. He gets to about the 20, 25, where he's hit hard and down at the 30. So he's still hitting hard out there. Oh, yes. Not giving up, continuing to play. Snap the whistle. Well, let's see if Bullard can generate something here, at least for the fans on the other side of the uh, stadium from where we are. They need something to cheer about. First down. Give us to the running back. He goes up the middle, big hole there. He gets to about the 37-yard uh, line. And, Mark, you're most, most certainly right. We do have some substitutions here uh, on both sides of the ball. Well, I, I would imagine if in a game like this where it's pretty much been decided you want to get some of your backups in so they can get, they get some playing experience in case one of the starters go down later in the mm -hmm. season, at least they have some experience. That last carry was number 27, Tanner Van Ness. Another give. The running back inside, he gets to about the 41. Mm. Good run. Kept his feet moving, falling forward. Looks like he got a first down on that play. Close to it, at least. Yeah, he did get the first down. Okay, first down and 10 at the 41 of Bullard. So they're trying to drive, get another touchdown. And uh, it's stacked up there at the 40. Uh-oh, a little fight here, uh, a little uh, extracurricular uh. activities here, a little frustration perhaps, but it's broken up very quickly. You got to keep your cool right now. What you don't want to see is is an ejection. According to CIF rules, a young man gets kicked out of this game. He cannot play the second game and has to appeal. Maybe they're just offsetting penalties and they say, okay, guys, just take it easy. We're not going to kick anybody out. Just watch your tempers and we'll just go on to the next play. Here's the call. Personal foul against Bullard. Wow. That hurts. That's like. An extra insult. Well, certainly not sure the yardage for penalty for the Bullard Knights tonight, but it's starting to pile up. Penalties, turnovers, uh, being dominated at the line of scrimmage. Tonight is not their night. It's a big penalty, too. It's going to be a 15-yarder. That's huge. It's not their night. Well, it's early in the season, so. That's right. It's a big learning uh, game, big game to, to grow from. Well, certainly, I mean, they can, they can win the next nine games. Well, eight games for the Bullet Knights. Oh, another give inside. Brought down after about a yard. It's going to make a third down for the Bullet Knights. Yeah, they just need to uh, close the game out on a good note, get some positive yardage. No injuries. No injuries. Maybe score again. And he's Going looking to the, the score now. And he throws it out got to the, the back out there. There far side, all the way down to the 50, down to the 40, 30, and down to about the 35-yard line. That was a great pass. Great run after the catch. Nice and easy pitch and catch. Hit the back and stride. Young man turned up the sideline, accelerated. Great game. That's one of their better plays all night. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. No penalties. That's positive yardage.
All right, another give inside. More room to run. Oh, and he's got some nice open move. space. He may go all the way. Now he goes down to about the 14-yard uh, line. Fantastic move by the sophomore running back, Tanner Van S, number 27. Young Gets man, good speed. Oh, great speed. Acceleration in a hole. They're Spin not Spin move up. at toward the end of the run. Fantastic. First down and 10 at the 14. Another give inside. More running room. Lanes are opening up. There's a lot of running room, and he gets almost to the goal line, to about the one-yard line, looks like. Close to it. Another hard run by the soft man. The sophomore, excuse me, folks, Tanner Van S. Well, it looks like around the, what, let's say about the two-yard line. There we go. They're on the verge of scoring. Another give inside. Why not? It's working. And he's he is close. He's close to the goal line, but not quite. He's getting very close. So it's going to be a timeout, apparently. Oh, no timeout. Yeah, there is a timeout. Timeout on the field. Nope. I was confused. Sorry about that. But it's going to be second down for the Knights at the goal line, essentially. As the ball oh, and fumble. fumble again. And I think they recovered the ball. As they unstack them. They recovered. They board. recovered the ball. I believe that's fumble number four on the night. Something is up. They're not focused for some reason when they get the ball. Give to number three. He there goes up is. the middle. There it is. And is he in? He's in for the touchdown. He is in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Bullard Knights. It's now a Buchanan 36, Bullard 12. Young man gets in there, number 27, Tanner Van Ness. For the touchdown, Bullard Knights. Something to build on for next week. Possibly seeing the two-headed monster with Van Ness and O'Neal next week, possibly. Both backs running hard here, but just simply not enough in tonight's matchup. Okay, so they're going to go for the extra point here, try to add another point to their total. And uh, here's the kick. It's a low snap, once again fumbled by the place holder, and he throws a pass for the conversion. Two points on the uh, play. So it's 14 to 36 in favor of Buchanan. Well, that was a nice uh, recovery there on the play. And uh, so now the score is Buchanan 36, Bullard 14, with a minute 20 left in the game. There's some momentum that uh, Bullard can uh, at least say they, they built near the end of this contest, heading into next week's game. Uh, they've uh, been dominated for the most part by Buchanan, a lot of mistakes, but uh, all of those can be corrected. The mistakes are something that you can always work on and, and, and eliminate as the season goes on. Uh, the main thing, though, is to keep your focus, and uh, at least they got another score here late in the game, and, and now uh, Buchanan will get, the ball, will get the ball back here. So that kind of brings some life back into the uh, fans over on Bullard's side of the, of the stadium. They can go home at least knowing that they've, they've got something to cheer about as the game is winding down here in the fourth quarter. Ball's placed at the 40-yard line for a next kickoff here to Buchanan with only a minute 20 left in the game here at McLean Stadium in Fresno, California. Here's the kick. It's another squib kick, and it's taken at the 25 up to about the 30, and it's taken down to about the 39. So it'll be first and 10 for Buchanan as they close out the game here with about a minute 14 left. The 
So I would imagine most of these remaining plays from Buchanan are probably going to be uh, running plays unless they want to uh, uh, open it up more. But uh, I'd be willing to bet that uh, it'll be mostly uh, a conservative uh, game plan at this point uh, on offense for Buchanan. Ball's on the 38. This is going to give inside to the running back. And it'll be second down. And he got maybe uh, a yard on the play before he's brought down. Time is running down to about a minute left in the game. And we're under a minute now left to play here at McLean Stadium in Fresno, California. We'd like to thank you for joining us here at PlayOnSports.com. Second down for Buchanan. They take the ball inside to the running back. He's brought down to about the 39. Make it the... Uh, 44 yard line and there's a penalty marker on the field referees are discussing what that penalty's for apparently it's going to be a personal foul grabbing the face mask by Bullard so that's going to be costly but at this point in the game it uh, kind of typifies actually the way that Bullard has played tonight unfortunately I mean highly touted team coming into the contest but apparently they've had uh, a game that's been filled with a lot of mistakes in the way of penalties uh, uh, turnovers missed opportunities but uh, it's going to make it first down and 10 for Buchanan at the Bullard 41 here in the closing seconds of this contest and this could be the final play of the game And here's a give to uh, number 12. He comes down, tackle down at the uh, 40 five yard line. And that's the game. Counting down, there's only less than three seconds left and it's the end of the game. That's the final score that you see on the scoreboard. Buchanan Bears have beaten the Bullard Knights here at McLean Stadium in Fresno, California, 36 to 14. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to stay tuned to PlayOnSports.com for our post-game coverage. We'll wrap up all the action in our post-game show, and we'll have an interview with our player of the game. That's coming up, up in just a few moments. Once again, the Buchanan Bears have defeated the Bullard Knights 36-14 to on Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. A Wiley Ballard yeah. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Fourth and ten from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs, and Jordan Lertik will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down two nothing, facing adversity, and they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by Bosback, a second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call! Uh, winner, oh. it's a, over, the, over the net call! Oh my goodness! Balls back, reached over on the attack. A Maverick Air wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh baby! 
Ivy. Shrigley with the jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. <laughs> Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a handoff to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way as he's at the 10, 5, touchdown. Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines and he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap play action to Campbell looks down the field now here comes the pressure he's going to be hit he breaks the tackle rolls left. Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last Bullard minute. Bullard trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, Cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rotobaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19. Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he um, he can make things happen here in this ballgame. They will go with him. Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory territory. The 25, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there. Cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bola Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy. By so first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun has time to throw. And he will fire, and he has a mad diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch, by he laid himself wow. out there. And a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely to Lewis and really caught his receiver on the go. And just kind of put it out there right on the outskirts of his fingertips. He laid out, and he made a catch. One and one. You know when a pitcher is behind an account and throws his breaking ball, he's feeling it. The pitch is going to be fisted to second base on a liner, and the ball is caught by McGrew, and Valley Christian wins the game on a Cameron Stewart no-hitter. Wow, what a way to go out if you're Cameron Stewart. A no-no in the championship game. If there's scouts out there, they had to be impressed by this young kid's velocity, control, and breaking ball all worked well today. He had it going for this Valley Christian team. What a gem. He's gonna give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone, do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's gonna go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design Uwaba. play. Uwaba back there. Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's under thrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga. Was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Moliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by 
by one of the Falcons, and then Maliga. He lands on the ground and pulls it in. What a so catch. A three men in the backfield, back to the wing. This time inside counter Telefaro. No, they're going to throw this one. He's got a man open. And a great, what a great, what a catch! What a grab by tight end Joe Gigantino. He must have bobbled that ball four times in the air, and he was actually tipped by the defender and had the presence of mind to keep his concentration and make the grab. Unbelievable catch. And the ball at the 29-yard line of the Eagles, and you can see the defense, they're still bewildered. How did he come Unfazed, up with that grab? even with two defenders around him and four big, that's so unconventional for a guy to handle the ball so well. January! Oh. With the one-hand jam. He was not going to be denied there coming over with Milmo. Bradshaw Christian is going to bring the starting unit out on the field one more time just to take a knee. Ten seconds left. They better hurry it up. Actually, they're going to try a field goal for Lawson. They're not. They're going to run out of time. Are they going to take? There's a snap. And they aren't even going to get the kickoff. They tried to hustle Lawson out there for a field goal opportunity to see if they could get her one, but it does not matter. They don't get the point off in time. Drew Rickert just got the Gatorade shower on the sideline. Bradshaw Christian is your winner, 62 to six. The final score, they are your D6 Titleist this year. Here in 2000. Five seconds left, clock winding down. Poway has won the title. 56 to nothing over the Vista Panthers. The championship goes to Poway. Well, your double wing T option offense down by five. They're going to have to spread it out. They go with three receivers to the near side. That's the short side. One solo left. Back to throw. McHugh. McHugh under pressure. Rolls out of it. Now he's dumped and dropped. And that's the last thing they could handle. And that's not what they could do. Bellerman now can't stop the clock. Fourth. Three, and that is going to do it. Santa Margarita coming back from the dead has won the Division I State Bowl Championship 42-37 in an improbable comeback against Bellarmine of San Jose. And the Bellarmine players on the field. Welcome to the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. We're working on getting an interview. Let's try this again. Can we do it again? Can we reset? Okay, so let's uh, – sorry for the uh, little uh, – Error there. Welcome back to PlayOnSports.com's coverage of Friday Night Football. I'm joined by our player of the game, Adam Sosman, uh, as the Buchanan Bears thoroughly defeated the Bullard Knights here at McLean Stadium here in Fresno, California tonight on Friday Night Football by the score of 36 to 14. I'm joined by our player of the game from the uh, Buchanan Bears, Adam Sosman. Adam, you had a hell of a game. You scored a touchdown. You had an interception. You were all over the field. How did you feel out there? I felt great. You know, our defense is out there bringing the energy. Our offense. You had a game against the fourth-ranked team coming into this game in the Bullard Knights. Uh, how did Coach Mike Boyd coach you? How, what kind of practice did you have this week that fired you up so much that we saw it coming onto the field tonight? Well, Bullard's a tough team, and we knew that, but we knew we were a good team also, and our ranking was no indication of that. We were we knew we were a much better team than they than they thought we would be, and we knew we could beat them, and we did. You had a hell of a game. It seemed like you were open on virtually every pass play out there. Uh, what kind of coverages were they throwing out at you? You know, they drop into some zone and some man, but when when our line gives a quarterback enough time, he'll always get the ball to us. And uh, looking ahead now for next week's game, how do you see that contest? It should go the same way. You know, we're going to keep the up in the intensity and hopefully get another W. And uh, as far as the game plan tonight, uh, did it work to uh, to everybody's surprise, or were you were you uh, just surprised that it worked so well? Tonight? We're not surprised at all. We knew what we could do, and we did it. We uh, fully expected to come out here and win the game. Well, thank you for being our player of the game here on Friday Night Football with PlayOnSports.com. Once again, our player of the game tonight is from the Buchanan Bears, Adam Sosman. Don't go. I can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP.
Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs and Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again down two nothing, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attacked there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner, oh. it's an over the, over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. Welcome back to Fresno, California and the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. I'm Mark Espinoza alongside Paris Gaines. And we just saw the Buchanan Bears thoroughly defeat the Bullard Knights here at McLean Stadium in Fresno, California, 36-14. to uh, Paris, uh, this game, uh, going into the game, we, we, we saw this highly touted uh, Bullard Knights team that was fourth rank coming into the game. And tonight uh, they gave uh, uh, a performance that was less than what we expected. Uh, do you think that was more of their letdown, or you, do you think that the Bullard Knights, uh, or do you think the Buchanan Bears, excuse me, just uh, overplayed them and, and uh, was just more fired up for the game? Oh, by no means. A well-prepared Buchanan Bear team came in clicking on all cylinders, high confidence, truly believe they can win this game. A true testament to their coaching staff and the hard work throughout the week. And uh, as far as the Bullard Knights are concerned, uh, what do they have to work on to get better for next week? Well, you know, it's tempo, and that style of offense is about developing a tempo, uh, coming out in, in confidence and not giving in to the, the fourth-ranked hype. Um, they can most certainly take away a positive from tonight. The young men did not give up. They continued to play, continued to ground and pound. And next week, just you go back to the drawing board. You look to, to what worked the week prior. And finally, for the uh, Buchanan Bears, uh, how much confidence does this give them going into the, the second week of the season? Oh, this is huge! This is huge for a program that went three and eight last season to come out here and to dominate like this, to to click on all cylinders, offense, defense, and special teams, and to come out and to beat the number fourth ranked team. So this is fantastic for that program. What a heck of a start uh, for Coach Volt and uh, and those kids over at Buchanan, and uh, it, it may be a magical season over there. Thank you, Paris. That's going to wrap it up from McLean Stadium, where the uh, Buchanan Bears defeat the Bullard Knights 36 to 14. We'd like to thank you for joining PlayOnSports.com's coverage of Friday Night Football from Fresno, California. Be sure to check PlayOnSports.com for information and links to all of our sporting upcoming broadcasts. For our producer, Cameron Anderson, our videographer, Matthew Merritt, and my partner, Paris Gaines, I'm Mark Espinoza saying so long, and we hope you'll join us next Friday night on your destination for high school sports and Friday Night Football, PlayOnSports.com.